And joining us live via Skype is legal practitioner Michelle Agatise to weigh on that matter. Good morning, Mr. Agatise. Good morning, Amaka. How are you? I'm very well. Now, very quickly, uh, you've heard about the news to go to have virtual proceedings. I believe that's yes. what it is. What's your thought on that as a legal practitioner? Is this even possible? Yes, uh, it's a welcome development. Um, as I see it, this is something that we should have already gotten by now. Um, you would notice that if you go across the continent, um, in Kenya, for example, during this COVID-19 um, period, um, the Kenyan Court of Appeal actually delivered about 57 to 62 judgments um, via Zoom. Right. And um, this just shows you the world of possibility that we now have. Um, actually, even in Nigeria, the Federal High Court, as well as the NIC, their court um, rules actually provide for video conferencing facilities, um, for hearings and trials and the like. So the possibility is not in question. However, moving from possibility to reality is a different ball game. Mm -hmm. It requires the infrastructure to be in place. It requires the sensitization of the people um, who practice, the legal practitioners themselves, as well as the judges who should move from the traditionalist view to what the modern 21st century poses, as well as the means by which we can overcome these challenges. Yeah. Um, so the possibility is not the question. Um, I think it's the infrastructural gaps that will get us to these virtual hearings. That's the real um, issue for us. Yeah, which brings me to my next question. Do you think we are prepared, considering you know, uh, internet availability and data in our part of the world, uh, and also in the statement uh, responding to questions, uh, we also noted that some Lawyers are not even registered in the platform that is supposed, this, uh, supposed to make this work. So how do you respond? Well, um, again, I say it's um, back to a situation where there has to be a synergy between the judiciary and the legal practitioners. So in the statement, it was about the rollout of NBA, um, NBA email addresses, which all lawyers were supposed to have, and by which service of court processes were supposed to have been done. Now, the uptake of that is not satisfactory at the moment. And if just the email platform by which communication should have been eased between the court and the legal practitioners has not been overcome, then it's a more difficult um, challenge to be able to bring in you know, online virtual hearings and the like. However, even be beyond having online virtual hearings, it's about the security of that infrastructure. So of recent, we have heard about Zoom, for example, being compromised by hackers and the like. So to the extent that there would be a level of publicity of the links for respective hearings, we don't want a situation where the hearings are compromised by hackers getting onto the system and you know, causing more harm than good. So I think that if we were even to introduce this, it has to be a phased introduction. And if there is a phased introduction, it has to be undergirded by, you know, court practice directions and protocols um, that should be issued by the CJN and or the chief justices of the respective states. Now, the justice reform project, you know, which is chaired by um, Funke Adekoya SEN and convened by um, um, Yemi um, Candy Johnson, you know, they had written a very, very comprehensive letter to the CJN, you know, urging the CJN to introduce such measures into the judiciary. Now, one good thing that they did by that letter, which is a public letter, easily accessible, was that they then um, appended different um, court protocols from across the world, um, from India, New Delhi, um, from Kenya, from Uganda, closer home, and even from the United Kingdom, from which we borrow most of our laws. So the platform and the precedent, should I say, the template is available. Uh, it's about transposing that template one and transposing it within the um, peculiar circumstances of the Nigerian situation, of our data issues, as well as our accessibility to the internet, as well as the literacy of practitioners um, to the use of some of these platforms. All right. Thank you so very much, Michelle Agatise, for your thoughts there. And do stay safe. Thank you very much, Amaka. Grateful for having me.